the rule of law. You may have heard about it in your history class, but do you remember what it means? It basically ensures that a democracy doesn't turn into a dictatorship. It states that all men are equally subject to the law, even the lawmakers themselves. But what we take for granted in our European democracies is currently at stake. It's mostly the case in Poland and Hungary. In the second episode of What's Left, we explore the challenges facing the rule of law and why we must fight to defend it. Beata Morawiec, jestem sędzią Rzeczpospolitej Polskiej, który jako pierwszy został pozbawiony immunitetu za to, że krytykował władzę. Bo wszystko, co dzieje się w stosunku do mnie, jak i w stosunku do sędziów, co do których toczą się jeszcze postępowania, jest reperkusją za udział w życiu publicznym, za walkę o praworządność. Judge Beata Morawiec is being prosecuted by the current Polish government namely the ruling Law and Justice Party, more commonly known as PiS. An ultra-conservative and populist party that's in power since 2015. <laughs> Ms. Morawiec is now facing up to 10 years of prison on the fabricated charges of corruption. She is not alone in Poland. She is just one of the many Polish judges that the peace government is trying to silence to take control over the judiciary and destroy the separation of powers in Poland. They are doing this in open defiance of the Polish constitution and even ignoring the rulings from the European Court of Justice. Is Poland leaning towards an authoritarian regime? We asked the question to Mr. Cimoszewicz former Prime Minister and Justice Minister of Poland. I have no doubt that this is the intention of the, of the people ruling the country to strengthen their autocratic power. Uh, and uh, it is more and more visible, uh, especially recently, when they use force against uh, peaceful protesters, when they persecute independent judges, uh, uh, when they persecute the opposition, this is, this is the nature of autocracy. But the problems go well beyond the independence of the justice system and affect fundamental rights, such as media freedom, the protection of women's rights and minorities. Look at what happened last October in Poland with abortion rights. The Constitutional Court, now in the hands of the peace government, made it illegal for women to abort even in cases when the fetus has severe defects, making the Polish law on abortion one of the most restrictive in the world. Hundreds of thousands of Polish citizens took to the streets to defend abortion rights in one of Poland's biggest protest movements in recent years. Unfortunately, Polish people are not the only ones facing worrying attacks on their democracy. The situation is actually even worse in Hungary, where the Prime Minister, Viktor Orban, in power for the last 10 years, decided to build an illiberal state. He looked to Russia and China as good examples, Orban's Fidesz party has imposed restrictions and increased its control over the opposition, the media, religious groups, the academic world, NGOs, the courts, asylum seekers, and the private sector. It has acted with a sense of complete impunity, under the protection of the European People's Party, which Fidesz is still a member of. So how did we get to this point? We asked the question to Clara Dobrev, Vice President of the European Parliament, an outspoken opponent to the Orban regime. Unfortunately, my answer is that it was all possible because of European funding. Because European Union gave a lot of funds for development and a big part of these funds went to the hands of oligarchs. And European Union was weak in a sense that they could not control 
that those money would, should go to the civil organization, to local government, to people. And instead of that, the money went to the big oligarchs. So they started to buy media, they started to create civil organization, they started to buy all kind of industry. And to build up a big power, which is very dif difficult now to defeat. In Poland and Hungary, the LGBTI plus community is also being targeted by populist politicians and nationalist groups. Dozens of local authorities adopted anti-LGBTI plus resolutions, declaring their territories free from LGBTI ideology. Even the president of the Polish Republic, Andrzej Duda, openly questioned the human dignity of LGBTI plus people. Próbuje się nam, proszę Państwa, wmówić, że to ludzie. A to jest po prostu ideologia. In Hungary, we may not have LGBTI free zones yet, but the cultural war against them is raging as well, since the government is trying to effectively put a ban on gay adoption. I'm from Germany, and when you hear gay people describing standing in front of a restaurant, and it says on the restaurant, homosexuals are not welcome. For me, as a German, I hear something else. I hear what we, what we experience, what Germans did in the 1930s, 1940s. This is so dangerous. We should never allow something like this to rise again. I remember 10 years ago, when we saw the first very serious signals from Hungary, people looked away. They thought this is a temporary thing. And then we saw it spill into one of the biggest member states into the European Union, in Poland thinking if Hungary can get away with it, we can too. And look at where we are today in 2020, when we have a government, for instance, in Bulgaria or a government in Slovenia following the same autocratic path. And these people are also being examples for populists in Western Europe. The ruling parties in Hungary and Poland argue that because they won the election democratically, they have the right to reform their countries and defend, as they claim, their identity and traditional values. Mr. López Aguilar is a former Justice Minister of Spain and is now SND member in the European Parliament. We have seen that in two countries of recent accession, Poland and Hungary, democracy has been forsaken because democracy is not only winning elections and running by your majority, it's also respecting minorities who have every right to oppose you because minorities of today in democracy may turn to be the majority of tomorrow. Why does any of this matter to the European Union? The EU is based on the mutual trust between countries that they will respect the rule of law, the independence of the judiciary and the primacy of EU law. If all of a sudden, one government decides not to play by the rules, then the whole project is damaged. The Treaty on the European Union states it clearly from the very beginning. All member states must respect the rule of law and the EU's fundamental values. If you don't agree on common values and on common rules, you can't have a common market, you can't have um, mutual trust, you can't have exchange of data, for example. Companies can't uh, have trade and have confidence that if there is a problem, they are in front of independent judges. So it comes down to this. To join the EU, Poland and Hungary had to comply with a set of criteria the so-called Copenhagen criteria, according to which they vowed to respect the rule of law, human rights and minorities. Now the question is, what happens if a country already inside the EU suddenly does a U-turn on these values? First of all, the Commission can start an infringement procedure that can end up in the European Court of Justice, the EU's highest legal authority, which can eventually impose a financial penalty on a member state. It worked when Poland tried to pass a bill on the early retirement of Supreme Court judges. It was designed to get rid of independent judges, including Małgorzata Gerdorf, the president of the Polish Supreme Court. Under the pressure of big financial fines, the peace government gave up. This was a historic victory for the Vice President of the European Commission, Franz Timmermans. 
The problem is that these infringement procedures take a lot of time and the rulings may simply come too late when the damage is already done. In theory, the EU also has the possibility to suspend a member state's voting rights in the Council. This is known as the Article 7 procedure and was launched for the first time against Poland and Hungary in 2017 and 2018. To punish a particular country, you need the unanimity of all other member states in the European Council. Poland and Hungary already announced that they would veto any sanction against one another. We have the so-called Article 7 procedure, which is not working by now. First of all, it takes a lot of time. And second, even that we criticize the member state and are alerted because the rule of law is not respected, nothing is happening because the Council is not taking any decision. And according to our rules, the Council is the only institution who could work on it. The Socialists and Democrats have been calling for years for a new, much stronger, broader and faster EU mechanism to protect democracy, the rule of law and fundamental rights with potential financial consequences. European citizens agree. A recent opinion poll shows that 77% of Europeans insist that EU funds should be linked to the respect for the rule of law. The SND group fought hard in the negotiations on the new long-term EU budget and the Coronavirus Recovery Fund. Again, Poland and Hungary were threatening to veto, but the final result is that for the first time, the EU will have a mechanism linking the budget to the rule of law. However, it may take some time before it becomes operational, as Hungary and Poland will almost certainly challenge it in the European Court of Justice. With this new mechanism, if a member state is abusing the justice system, they can be sanctioned, so they are not going to have, in the end, access uh, to EU funds. In the future, we are going to discuss the future of the European Union, and I think it would be a good opportunity to enlarge the scope and the effectiveness of, the, of this new mechanism. But this is a first step, and this is a good step. And social democrats, the word in itself says it already, we don't just care about welfare and prosperity for all, but also about freedom, about the respect for democracy, about the respect for minority rights. Social democrats care about prosperity, but also freedom for all. <laughs>